All right, so in this video, we're going to get into the good stuff. This is how you're going to get into the back end of WordPress and start using the administrator panel. And when we are doing this, um, the easiest way to get there is to actually just type it into the URL field, uh, place where you put in the URL. Um, so what you're going to end up doing, and you're going to have this in your checklist, so you can use this that checklist as reference to do this. But you're going to type in your domain name. So say your domain name was I Love Dogs. I Love Dogs dot com. Then you're going to do forward slash WP, like William Paul, it stands for WordPress, WordPress dash admin, it stands for administrator, A D M I N. And so WP dash admin. So I Love Dogs dot com forward slash WP dash admin. So on our test site, we're going to go into the panel, to the administrator panel. And you're going to see something like this. And typically with uh, with your administ your um, install, you're going to see <clears throat> you're going to see um, something that says uh, username and password. And usually it's going to be admin as your username. Uh, for security reasons, you might want to change that to something else since everyone uses that. Uh, since this is, a, this is a test site, I don't care. Um, and uh, but still, you want to you want to make sure that uh, you make it as as secure as possible. So I would change this to maybe your first and last name or um, first and last name together, and then whatever your password is, and that was set by uh, the person who created your website for you. And then you're just going to log in. And you're going to see back here, you're going to see, you might see, uh, it might look a little different than what I have here. Uh, usually it'll have like a WordPress welcome screen and stuff. And depending on the plugins that you have, it's just going to look um, different. Uh, and so what we're going to do here is I'm going to give you a, a, just a quick overview of, of the admin panel before we start doing anything. So you're going to have the uh, the dashboard here. This is your 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 dashboard. You can do things like add, quickly add a post, um, by entering a title, content, and tags. I usually don't recommend that since you want to you want to have really good SEO rich posts. Um, but uh, it's definitely there for you to use. You can even enter in uh, different images and so on. Uh, recent comments. If you have any comments. Um, uh, incoming links, plugins, WordPress blog, news, and all that other stuff. And depending on the plugins that you have, you might have more stuff. All right, so um, after that, you have this sidebar. In the sidebar, you have a lot of different things. First is dashboard. You're going to have home and update. Home is just going to take you right back to where we're at right now. You're going to have updates here. Updates allow you to update your themes and allows you to update, so you, and update your Plugins. You always want to keep your plugins up to date, and it's very easy to do. And in fact, in fact, I'm going to show you how to do it right now because it's so important. You're going to go and click this, and it's going to say it's going to show you if you have themes or plugins to update. You just select all, and then click update plugins. The reason being is each plugin, especially for security purposes, they update because maybe they find. Uh, not only find that they have bugs, but they find that they might have vulnerabilities. And so as they f see that they have these new vulnerabilities, they update those plugins. So just use that. And when you're using that, make sure that you, um, uh, that you keep your plugins up to date so that your site is secure. Next, you're going to have posts, and we're going to go into posts but uh, later on, but just briefly, posts are the things, th this is the content that changes and adds on a regular basis. So say you have press releases, or say that you have new deals that are coming out every week, or say that you have, um, uh, you, you, you know, you're trying to advertise, maybe you're real, in real estate, maybe you're ad advertising a new home. This is where you are writing about that new home. And all and here, when you highlight, you're going to see off to the right new things that come up. Um, all posts add new t uh, categories and tags. So this and for all posts, it's going to take you to all the posts that you have. Add new is obviously going to add a new post. Categories, and we're going to go into this in a little bit, but uh, I'll go uh, over in an overview right now. Categories are are how you organize your blog posts. 
Um, and tags do this a little bit too, but categories are like, for example, if you go into, say, a Barnes & Noble or a bookstore, just a bookstore in general, you're going to go to, uh, you're going to see that it's categorized, uh, each section is categorized in a certain way. So you have your business section, you have your uh, romance section, you have your philosophy section. Those are the categories. These are very broad uh, way, uh, ways of organizing your content that you create. So you might have news, you might have uh, productivity, you might have marketing, you might have uh, homes in Huntington Beach, or you might have whatever. Uh, but they're very, very broad. Tags also help you to organize your thing, but these are more like when you go to the bookstore, you go to the specific category, say philosophy, but Within philosophy, you have modern philosophy, ancient philosophy, you have phenomenology, you have epistemology, you have all these different things um, in that category of philosophy. So that's what tags do. It allows you to tag these very specific um, organization uh, items to that particular content. And you want, and for categories, you want to have between one and three. I recommend just having one. If you can, if you can do it, tags you can have as many as you like. Uh, I've I've never seen any adverse effect to having a lot of tags, but you just got to be careful that you want the tags to be relevant and so on. Um, the next area you're gonna have media. This is your media library um, when you're adding new pictures, adding new posts, and so on. Uh, then you're gonna have links. All your links. Uh, the the links are things such as this is kind of like a blog role this is where you would have links to different places on the web on your sidebar a lot of people don't use this anymore uh, Google doesn't like having just all these different links linking uh, all over the place so a lot of people don't use them that much anymore but you can have an you can add it and then you can put it as a blog role on your sidebar if you want but it's not really that great anymore they used to be all the rage then you have pages. Pages are like posts, but they are very different. They are static. These are things that are not going to change too often um, or at all. These are things such as your about page, your disclaimer page, your terms and, and service page, your, um, um, your contact us page. All these pages, all these areas are things that you are not going to change too often. And you have comments. This is your uh, when people are actually commenting on the on the content that you have. Appearance allows you to change the theme, allows you to change your widgets, which widgets are usually on your sidebar. Allows you to move things on your sidebar and so on. Menus allow you to change the navigation bar. So the navigation bar that we saw up on top. Um, let me go to this real quick. The navigation bar that we saw up on type, the top here allows you to change where you what you want up there and where you want it and if you want uh, child pages and so on. So back to appearance, you have theme options. Different different themes have different uh, options. So you might have a theme that allows you to change the header or allows you to change the logo uh, depending on the theme that was given to you or developed. To, uh, for you, uh, it de depends on what that theme has, and sometimes the theme, depending on what they are, will actually not be. All the options might not under be under appearance; it might be under another uh, thing that's added on the sidebar. Um, and the background header, uh, background and header, is actually part of this particular theme, so you might not actually see that in your theme. And then you have the editor. The editor actually lets you. Uh, edit the theme itself so you can see all of the this is the CSS this is the style sheets you can go and edit this if you absolutely wanted to and then over here on the right hand side you can edit your footer header and all the other stuff under appearance you have plugins plugins are kind of if you think about uh, for example, an iPhone. A lot of people have iPhones and smartphones now. The phone by itself is not that great. The phone by itself does not do much, right? It is the apps that come with the phone that really make it powerful. 
uh, all of the apps for PayPal and for Mint.com and for all these different things. That's what makes that phone really, really powerful. Yes, you can do email and all other stuff with it, but what makes it powerful is the ability to extend what you have. So, for example, if you wanted to have something that um, created web forms for you, you can have a plugin that created web. There's plugins out there that create web forms. If you have a uh, if you need something to do social sharing with, with on Twitter and and so on, uh, there is there are plugins out there, tons of plugins that allow you to do social sharing. Um, if you say you needed a uh, to create landing pages, there are plugins out there that allow the, for that. So um, it's just a great way to extend what you already have with plugins. Um, I'm going to go down to users. Users obviously are being able to, this is where you can add new users, modify u new users, um, change their information and so on. So if you have more m more than one person in your business that's going to be on your blog, you can give them the ability to edit things. Say you have people who work under you that you want them to be able to create content but you don't want them to be able to do any administrative functions. You can set them as an editor, you can set them as a contributor and so on and they have different functionalities per um, whatever permissions you give them. Under tools, uh, this allows you to import and export different, um, this allows you to import and export your blog posts and your content and uh, all of the stuff that you have in your site. Settings, very important. Um, your uh, you have uh, your general settings, which is uh, this is going to be your time and date, what your URL is, um, and so on and so forth. Writing is how, how your settings for when you write blog posts, um, and um, and uh, if you want to be able to enable things such as. Uh, writing via email or through remote uh, being able to do it remotely through the iPhone app and so on reading is uh, allows you to set how you want your blog post to be read or your content to be read more uh, rather I should say so if you have a an area where you do have news or whatever uh, you could have it set to where you only show five things or you or you show 10 different things um, you have your discussions this is your your preferences for comments and so on and we're going to go through um, all of these settings later on as well uh, you have media this is how you want how you set up your uh, how you want your media to be uploaded and all stuff, and all that other stuff anything that has to do with media privacy this is if you want your site to be indexed by Google or not and permalinks, how you want your URLs to be structured. Um, this is, for example, say you have a post that is, I love big dogs. So when you create this post, uh, rather than saying www.ilovedogs.com forward slash P or question mark P equals 186, which is normally the way WordPress used to do it, you can set it up to where it says your domain forward slash I dash love dash big dash dogs. And that's really good for SEO purposes because it helps Google to determine relevancy and other search engines to de determine relevancy. And uh, we'll ignore related posts because that's a plugin. And that's it. That is, um, that is all you are going to be seeing uh, on a general basis in the back end when it when it comes to all these different options um, I know it's a lot don't worry it is not nearly as hard as as you're probably thinking it is but um, but there is there is a lot to learn but I promise you the learning curve even though it's steep at first it will get better I promise well with that uh, I if, if you have any questions please don't hesitate um, to send an email and uh, I will in the next uh, in the next video we will be going over um, various things such as posts and pages.